We've done a flu flow test. We know the flu is clear, it's working, everything's fine. Any problem we have from now on is not going to be a flu problem. Right? It's going to be an appliance or a ventilation problem. The next test is the spillage test. And the spillage test is to work out whether the combination of the flu, the appliance, and the ventilation all work together. That's all it is. So the appliance has got to be on, the doors and windows have got to be closed, but this time, right, you may have to do 10 spillage tests, right, this time you've got to turn on any fans that are in the room. Ceiling fans, anything else that will drag air away from this appliance needs to go on. Other open fluid appliances, right, anything that's going to suck air away from this appliance needs to go on because that's the worst case scenario, the maximum stress. So you close the doors and windows, switch the fans on, passive stack ventilation. Anybody told you about PSV? No. no. Right, okay, I'll, I'll send you something about PSV. Passive stack ventilation, the first one you do with it closed. This is ventilation for the house that you can open and close. Not gas ventilation, it's other ventilation. Close it, right, and now everything's tight as a drum and the ventilation is the only place you're getting air from. We happy with that? So what you do is, you light the appliance, because this is a test of whether the appliance works with the flu and the ventilation. Why am I having to hold this in? Lovely. We're waiting for the therm the heat from the thermocouple to charge the back of the heat the, the gas valve. Yeah. Now I can turn it and it should light. The, the slow light in isn't isn't on that. Okay, now that's on. You're gonna let that. You're going to let that warm up. Okay, you're now going to let that warm up for five minutes. Let it get itself all good and juiced up. We don't do spillage tests with smoke bombs. That's for flus only. If you do that, you're going to fail. Not only that, you're going to throw everything everywhere. Right, it's a different place for the spillage test. Remember this, this is where we did the flu flow test. The test for the spillage on these is up here at the downdraft diverter. Why is it called the downdraft diverter? So what does it do? It diverts the downdraft. Well done. So all, what you're checking for is to make sure that there's enough ventilation and this has got enough power to put the products of combustion up the flue without them coming back down and if they come back down, the downdraft diverter is going to steep them out that way. So the way we test to see whether it's working is we put some smoke right at the downdraft diverter. And if it is buggered, the smoke's going to blow out, isn't it? If it's working fine, it's going to suck in. I'll tell you now the injectors on this are all well off. Does that come to just went low a minute ago? Up and cooling itself down. This is a smart heater, that's why. Okay, right. Smoke match. You've got to go in here and it's 10 centimeters down and 10 centimeters, 10 millimeters down, 10 millimeters out. About the size of your pinky. Right? And it's so, it's so that you can see the smoke going in. Right, and you do that on both sides. Use a different match, do it on the other side as well. Both sides. 10 millimeter in. Yeah, 10 mil, 10 mil in, 10 mil down. Just, just there at the bottom lip, yeah? So as you can see the smoke going in. If it spills out, it's ID. Straightforward ID. That's, that is the most dangerous situation in gas. Is a spilling. If it spills, if the stuff comes out, it's immediately dangerous. That is what kills people. Spillage. All right. 
Okay. So you're with me so far. That's the spillage test, number one. What you do now is, it's down to your judgment as a gas engineer, right? This is where the judgment comes in. If you're in an old country house like I live in in Norfolk, it's an old farmhouse, got, you know, the windows don't quite fit, the doors don't fit, all that sort of stuff, and it's big, yeah, there's loads of air, right? Opening the door, and me putting the fan on in the kitchen before rooms away ain't gonna have shit difference. However, if I'm in one of the new houses that's tight as a toad's twat, yeah. right? You can't get air. You, you just the air can't get in or out of it. It might it might make a difference if you open this door, you open the kitchen door, and you put the kitchen cooker hob on, uh, the extractor fan on. It might be two rooms away, but because the house is so tight. It might suck air from this. It's your judgment call. Alright? But in any case, you're going to open the at the end of your first tightness test, you're going to open the PSV, the passive stack ventilation. I'll send you something about passive stack ventilation. Right? You're going to open it, you're going to do the, tight, the, the thing, you're going to do the test again with the passive stack ventilation open. Then you're going to open the doors and you're going to turn any fans on in the next room and you're going to do the test again. Got that? So it might be you have to do five, six, seven tests. Just put it in as many different scenarios as you can. Cool. Right, and the last thing, last thing before it goes, is important. If it fails a spillage test, what is the first thing you're going to do to try and start to analyze or work out what the problem might be? Right, if the problem's ventilation. Number one problem for a failed spillage test is ventilation. It's not a blocked flu because we've checked that on the flu flow test. Number one is we haven't got enough ventilation. How are we going to check if it's a ventilation problem? We add 50 Brilliant. What you're allowed to do is open a window. Just crack the window open. Let more air in. If you then do your spillage test and it passes, you know from an engineering point of view that it's a ventilation problem. You need to put a bigger vent brick in. Right? That's the only time you open a window on a spillage test is if it fails and you want to see whether it's a ventilation problem. Everybody got that? Some people, for some reason, get it in their head that they should open windows on spillage tests. Don't do that. That's only there to start analysing what the problem is. Oh, it's failed. Wow. Let me see whether it's ventilation. Open the window. Do it again. Oh, do you know what? That's cured the problem. It's clearly a ventilation problem. Or that hasn't cured the problem, so it's not a ventilation problem. I can move on to another problem. Right? Everybody got that? Yeah.